Today we're going to talk about one of the first app-based textbooks to be made available in the App Store from a traditional textbook publisher. Now if you go to the App Store and do a search for HMH Fuse, F-U-S-E, you get two results for the iPad only. Both of these apps are from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. The first one is an Algebra 1 textbook. Now when you download and install this free app, you get the main textbook app and you get a free sample chapter. Now within the app, you can go ahead and purchase the entire text, Algebra 1 textbook. It costs $59.99, but if you go to the description for this app, they give you a telephone number you can call to get institutional pricing. There's also a geometry textbook. When you download this app, you also get the main textbook app and a free sample chapter, but so far the entire textbook is not available for download. Now, I've gone ahead and installed this app on my iPad. It's a large app. It's 550 meg. Just as a reference, Angry Birds is about 15 meg and Pages is about 88 meg. It took 35 minutes to download this app and then when I launched it for the first time it took another five minutes or so to complete the installing process. You see here where you can go ahead and uh, buy the complete textbook for $59.99. Now when you first launch the app you come to a table of contents where you can choose which chapter you want. I'm going to choose chapter 3, the free sample chapter and you go to a table of contents for that chapter. You see each of the sections. Now there's a menu up on top that has this book that takes you back to the table of contents. You have another table of contents menu that you can choose and you close that by pushing the little down arrow you can go to the index that pops up. You can close it back. There's an uh, option where you can add notes. We'll talk about that later. Close it up. There are tools, and I like this. There are some tabs over here where you can work with algebra tiles. There is a linear explorer where you can investigate linear equations. You can use this little slider to change the slope. You can use this slider to change the y-intercept. That's a nice little investigative tool. There's a button to reset it. There's a quadratic explorer that is very similar. You can change the A, B, and C constants and see how that affects the graph. And there's also a button to reset it. And then there is a graphing tab where you can graph four separate equations. Tap on the box and you can input your equation and then view those four equations on one graph. You can also look at the table of values for that graph. I like those tools. There is a scratch pad that you can use at any time. There is a slider for adjusting the pen. There are three different pen colors and the eraser is not actually an eraser and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. The scratch pad is graph paper and when you select the eraser, I'm going to make the eraser a little bit larger, it not only erases what you've written but it erases your graph paper. So it's not actually an eraser, it's more like white out. But if you want to clear the whole page, just push clear and your graph paper comes back. Okay. 
and then there's an option for settings and that gives you a little box uh, it says uh, to begin downloading content add your authentication code so that leads me to believe that uh, the entire textbook oops I clicked done and it took me out uh, that leads me to believe that the entire textbook is on my iPad now. I just have to unlock it. Okay, now the textbook is viewable in, or in landscape, landscape and uh, portrait mode. I'm going to leave it in landscape. Makes it easier to video. Now, at the top of each section, it has a table of contents, and it says, Are you ready? And there's a little uh, pre-section, or pre-chapter, this is for chapter three, a little uh, quiz you can take, and click start the quiz. You take the quiz, and when you're done, uh, you will click submit, and it will grade it. Um, I'm going to go back. Then there is, after that, there's a skills review. Now, after you take that little quiz, if uh, you make 100%, you'll have check marks on each of these little tabs. Uh, if you did poorly in one section, like if you did poorly on compare and order real numbers, you won't get a check mark for this and on each one of the the sections that you want to go back and review it'll have a video it'll have some practice questions if you click on this another uh, little quiz will come up that you can take after you've watched the video then there's also a post test quiz that you can take and those will all be self graded I'm going to go back to the little table of contents. Let's say we're ready for section one. Section one looks very much like a page out of a traditional textbook would. Um, let me see. The highlighted words, if you click on those, it'll give you a definition. Um, the examples, um, some of them have a little option where you can view in motion. It says swipe here to reveal example, so I swipe down and it does the problem step by step. So you can view an example step by step. That's nice if you have a, a student that is maybe overwhelmed by looking at an example that is already completely worked out, overwhelmed by the information. You can view it one step at a time. Okay. There are embedded videos that you can play. You know, when we're looking at equality, it's great because we know that whatever's on one side is going to actually be identical to whatever's on the other side. Now, as the video plays, um, we'll see if it'll show it. Work will be shown over here. I don't want to use up all my time on that, but that's a nice law feature. Uh, here's a note. I think that's just there's not a note in there. That's just a place for you to add a note. Okay. Now, as far as note taking goes, you can't write directly on the screen. You can't highlight anything. But if you want to take a note at some point, um, go to notes, add a note. You can choose what color to make your little notification. I'm going to use the purplish color. Um, 
I'm just going to write note. You can also record audio to go along with that note. Okay, this is the audio that goes along with this note. Stop. Okay, I'm going to close up my note. There's my note right there, and I can move it anywhere. I might want to put it beside that or put it over here in the margin so that when I go back to study I can look at my note. Click on your note. You see the note you've typed? I wanna, let me see if this will be loud enough. Okay, this is the audio that goes along with this note. So that's a nice little feature. I'm going to close that down. Okay. Um, okay. There are actually, there's menus here. There's another row of menus. So, um, after the lesson and examples, you can go to guided practice. Now, these are the practice problems that you would have at the end of this section in a traditional textbook. Um, you go through. You have to do these on paper. These are not, um, you can't do these problems on the iPad like you could the little quizzes at the beginning of the chapter. Some of these have um, answers available to self-check yourself. Um, kind of like looking up the odds in the back of a traditional textbook. Uh, you scroll through. Those are the guided practice. Let's see. After guided practice, there are <coughs> practice and problem solving. Again, you just have to do these on regular paper. And then it goes to section two. So, let me go back to section one. What I like about this this app, this textbook, is I like the interactive examples. I like the um, pretest that is self-graded and you can see right there you get immediate feedback. Um, if you do poorly on the pretest, I like the skills review. I like the video you can watch and uh, take do additional practice and it's graded right then and you get immediate feedback. What I don't like or I'm not impressed with is the um, the the practice problems at the end of this section that you just have to do on traditional paper. I wish wish there were some way that the student could uh, do the homework problems uh, within the app and then share it with the teacher via email or something like that. That would really be nice to be able to go completely paperless. Another thing that I'm not overly impressed with, um, the note-taking ability I think is fine for uh, uh, reflective notes if you're at home in your bedroom and you're reading over your text and you're taking notes, but I think taking notes in class using uh, the note-taking feature would be somewhat cumbersome. Uh, so that's something that I'm not real impressed with. Um, another thing about the scratch pad that um, I would like to see different is if you write something on the scratch pad and you close up your scratch pad to do something else and you open the scratch pad back up, it clears it. I would like to for the information to be able to stay on the scratch pad, change a page, whatever. That would be nice. So overall, uh, it's a nice app, uh, but will it catch on with students and teachers? Let me know what you think about it, and we'll see how things go.